uh, hopefully the rest will join us soon. Um, we're looking at understanding the role of public health and health promotion and health care policy. That's a learning outcome for. So we'll quickly look at, we'll assess the national and international sociopolitical issues in the promotion of public health, we'll analyze the impact of international campaigns and national policies on the demand for health care, and we'll evaluate the role of health promotion in determining the health care service demand in the national context. And the last learning outcome, L05, it's only three learning outcomes, which are very short. So if we have time, we'll finish everything today. And then if you look at the sample uh, report, sample assignment that I gave you, it actually uh, embodies everything in the context of Pakistan. So that is supposed to guide you. So let's crack on straight away and see how far we can go. So in the first place, we will try and look and understand the concept of health promotion before we get on to the actual learning outcomes. Right. So a health promotion is simply uh, a process that enables people to improve or have greater control over their health. So when we say health promotion, it involves individuals, the government, the community, and the international community all coming together to make sure that people can improve or have control over their health. Right. Let's look at the second slide. That is a framework of health promotion. This is a framework for health promotion. So if you look at health promotion at the core, at the middle top, we have the community-based work that is supposed to help promote our health. Um, we have environmental health regulations, such as reusable bags. So if you look at the first one, uh, the London uh, inner, inner city con uh, congestion charge is part of the community-based uh, work to try to promote health. So if you go into the congestion zone, you are charged. Why? They are trying to reduce pollution. It's health promotion. And then if you look at the right-hand side in the middle of health education, trying to educate people on sexual health, uh, drug education in schools are all health promotion. We have economic regulatory activities such as restriction on the sale of alcohol. That is health promotion. We have public health policies like the banning of smoking in public places. It's a health promotion. Organizational development. For example, help, you can uh, you promote health through schools. It means that you are using an organization. Then part of the health promotion is also uh, the preventive aspect of it, such as breast cancer screening. This is also health promotion. So health promotion is very broad. Right. Now, health promotion is not just the responsibility of the health sector. Everybody, individuals, communities, and schools, health promotion uh, professionals, health service institutions, the government, and to some extent, international organizations, they must work together to provide a healthcare system that promotes the health of the population. Right, so we look at the individuals. What role do you think individuals can play? Because health is created and experienced by people within the setting of their everyday life, where they learn, where they work, where they play, where they love. In all these settings, you can promote health. So health promotion includes and encourages individuals' responsibility and action. You can't leave health promotion on government. Individuals need to take action. And then I spoke about the community as part of health promotion. If the campaign will succeed, it means that the community must embrace that health promotion drive. So uh, community health programs may help target on varying scales. They may direct, be direct at individuals, local communities, the state, or the entire country. Right. And the health inf information is therefore provided to the general public through the mass media. There can't be and, uh, a promotion on uh, 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 smoking cessation, and it will be taken over by the mass media and the news all over. 
At the same time, architects, engineers, urban planners can all contribute to health promotion. The way they build the houses for us, the way they plan our towns can all contribute. Again, schools also have important part to play in health promotion. Right. And then, as I said, we have non-governmental organizations who also engage or take part. So non-governmental and professional organizations play an important role in community education, providing health services, research, workforce development, and political advocacy. So the NGOs could be large national and state bodies such as British Heart Foundation and the Cancer Trust, uh, Cancer Trust and the King Fund. They are all a non-governmental organization. The international ones, you know, the WHO and all that. So the, uh, at the government level, uh, all levels of government, local government, state government, the federal government have a key role to play. So if you take UK as, as an example, we have local government, uh, the Manchester City Council, they are in charge, and then the state as a whole, the whole of UK. If it's in the US, then you have the federal government coming in. Apart from all the different states in the US, you have the federal government also coming in. Because the state cannot do anything on, on, uh, on its own to succeed without local initiatives. At the same time, on other federal levels, they can succeed if different states within the federation are not part of it. Right. Let's the next slide. International organizations, they assist and guide countries in achieving the best health for their citizens. A number of international organizations have been established. The UN, the WHO, the United Nations Children Fund are three such organizations. All of these bodies are involved in promoting global health across the world. Right, so if you look at international organization, the UN maintains international peace and security. They develop friendly relations between countries based on respect for the principles of equal rights and the rest. They cooperate on uh, solving international economic issues, social, cultural, humanitarian problems, and promote respect for human rights and fundamental freedom. That is their main remit. And within the UN are uh, administrative bodies that play a key role in health promotion, including the World Health Organization. They are the main aspect of the UN that is in charge with health promotion, WHO, right? And we also have got a UNICEF who try to promote health of children in terms of immunization campaigns and all that, right? Let's go to the next slide. Health promotion is aimed at improving the health of an individual community or changing behavior that may have a negative influence on health. And there are uh, approaches and key strategies which range from individual interventions such as uh, providing uh, posters for positive message, uh, development of a national health promotion policy such as national mental health strategy in the UK, which is a national one. So if you look at the framework for health promotion, this is how it works. We have illness or health risk. The focus for the promotion will be on individuals, groups, and populations. And they can also design strategies, which will be lifestyle or behavior changes, or it could be preventative medical or public health issues. So these are the key strategies that can be used. And if you uh, look at the top, you're going to be, it could be behavioral adaptation to changes to a behavior that will improve health. Uh, or environmental adaptation. So you either change your behavior or change your environment to promote health. So if you look at smoking, it's a, it's a behavior change. You have to change the way you, you, you smoke. If it's about uh, obesity, change about the behavior. Don't be sedentary, you need to do more exercise. And then we have environmental adaptation, changes to the environment that will promote health. Uh, if you want to uh, promote health and you don't uh, provide uh, playgrounds, forest areas, and the rest, providing beans for them to put litter in, these are all issues that you can look at. They are all issues that you can look at. So they will all impact on better health and well being and quality of life. Right. Let's look at the next slide. 
We've got lifestyle and behavior approaches. They are concerned with individuals or groups whose behavior or social situation place them at a greater risk of developing unhealthy lifestyle. And I've explained this one by looking at uh, people's lifestyle in terms of smoking, in terms of people being sedentary, in terms of people um, eating unbalanced diet. These are all lifestyle issues that could be changed to promote uh, health. So that is a life stroke behavior approach. Let's look at self-help and self-care. Self-help is something that you can do yourself. Self-help, how we can manage our own health problems rather than seeking professional help. There are so many things that we can do for ourselves. And then self-care is caring for oneself or a friend or family member rather than using the care traditionally provided by professional health care provided. So you can help yourself and you can also self-care. Let's look at individual lifestyle approach. Uh, the individual lifestyle approach to health promotion is based on the principle that the major causes of morbidity and mortality within Australia are disease resulting from poor lifestyle behavior choices. And this approach tends to blame individuals for their poor health. For this approach, if you have poor health, it's blame on yourself because it's your own lifestyle. An example is smoking, which has been identified as one of the most significant causes of avoidable death and disease. So uh, individual lifestyle, targeting, targeting people's individual lifestyle is one of the key approaches that can also be used. So we are looking at what is health promotion in general, then we'll come on straight. And then I've already spoken about the environmental approach. This is done by addressing the social determinants of health. The social determinants of health are fo uh, food, housing, income, employment, transport, education, and factors such as addiction, social isolation, and early life experiences. Once we are able to address all these issues, then we are on the way forward for proper health. Right. So it's so detailed there. Let me go to the next slide. Apart from that, we have harm minimization approach. It's another approach. That I said that despite our best effort, some people will choose to engage in risk-taking behavior, such as drug use, or unsafe sexual activity. The harm minimization approach aims to reduce the adverse health, social and economic consequences of risk taking behaviors by minimizing or limiting the harms and the hazard for both the community and the individual without necessarily eliminating the use. For instance, uh, the harm minimization, we know people are on drugs all across the UK. Yes, people are on drugs. But what do you do? We have to minimize the harm by giving them prescription medication at the GP surgeries. They come in there for medications, and that is going to make sure that they will be able to minimize the harm to themselves. So that is the uh, harm minimization approach. Uh, we have zero tolerance approach. For this approach, it's got to do with strict policing, policing measures. For instance, uh, if you talk about when these approaches are used in connection with wider drug use issues or sexual health practices, for example, they may potentially lead to increased victimization. It does not consider a particular behavior such as drug use to be a health issue. Rather, it is viewed as a legal issue. So smoking, marijuana, sniffing cocaine, and the rest are all issues. So one of the ways to promote health is zero tolerance, where people are arrested for engaging in certain activities. Uh, if you go to Amsterdam, prostitution is legalized, it's free, and they pay taxes. But if you go to other parts of the world, you can't do it as in the Netherlands. So because the approach here is what? Zero tolerance. You can't do it. Right. So we look at a lot of approaches. And then we have preventive medical approaches. They are the traditional approaches of health sector. Preventive approaches, it means you are bringing the GPs and the, the consultant in to make sure they help prevent. That could be uh, 
with regards health as an absence of illness and disease is a medical approach that is preventive. This approach is directed at improving physiological risk factors, that is, those relating to the way living, the way living things function. For example, examples are high blood pressure and lack of immunization. This approach is also focused on treatment and prevention. So they feel that they can improve people's lives by engaging in what? Immunization. That is the preventative medical approach. So the three main stages are primary prevention, secondary prevention, and secondary prevention. The primary prevention is um, through the GP surgery, secondary one, and then the tertiary one, uh, the teaching hospitals, right. Public health approaches aim to provide the maximum benefit for the largest number of people. They are concerned with preventing disease or injury. So we have the health promotion aspect, then we have public health approach. Public health, they are concerned in preventing disease or injury from occurring or reoccurring. At the same time, promoting health and returning health to populations and communities following natural or man-made disasters. So we have the health promotion that I've talked so much, and then we have public health approach as well. Right. Health promotion has three main ways of going about it. Um, enable people to take control of their life is number one. Create the environment which is supportive for them or advocacy. You advocate to be able to create the right conditions. Right. We are getting to the end of this. Deciding on a strategy, critical inquiry. Propose actions that may improve health of young people, for example. Young people. Nine key areas, if you want to promote life for them, give them the best start in life. Now, when they are young, give them the best start. When they go to school, health, healthy schools and peoples are part of it. Healthy people find good jobs and stay in work. Active and safe travel, warmer and safer homes, access to green and open spaces, and the role of leisure services, strong communities, well-being, resilience, public protection, and mobility services, including uh, takeaway and fast food and air pollution and fire safety are all, are all issues that can be looked at. And then we have health and special planning, the way they plan the whole area. These are all key issues that impact of health promotion and public health. Right. Now, listen to this place carefully because it actually addresses the learning outcomes. Listen carefully. We're trying to look at uh, 4.1, which says that assess national and international sociopolitical issues in the promotion of public health. Assess national and international sociopolitical issues in the promotion of public health. So you know public health, you've understood it, you know health promotion, what is it? Now, there are some national and international sociopolitical issues that actually impact on health promotion. Number one, attitude towards pharmaceutical companies and new drugs. Um, pharmaceutical uh, companies, people have got attitude towards them. Why? Because they are profit oriented. All that they want is their money. Why don't you produce uh, um, medication that will cure HIV? And if you just uh, come up with medications that will prolong their life and reduce the viral load. Why? Because they want to make sure that you remain on the, the medication until you die. If you are talking about a uh, uh, blood thinning medication like all the statins or if you are looking at blood pressure medications why don't they do something that can get, get rid of the disease they'll put you on the medication and you live on the medication for life so people are beginning to find some funny attitudes towards pharmaceutical companies and new drugs these are real sociopolitical issues that needs to be answered. Now, let's look at the second aspect, testing of new drugs and mistrust. There are so many social issues with new drugs coming up. People, people don't trust people. Uh, when genuinely drugs came up to help 
support people with HIV in South Africa, the then president decided that, oh, we don't buy into that. It's happening in both South Africa and Zimbabwe. Maybe they want to use this as guinea pigs. All the drugs are actually infected. They want to infect and reduce our population. These are all sociopolitical issues surrounding care promotion. So how do you succeed if people have got that mindset that we are not going to go into these drugs, right? And sometimes there are genuine fears. There are genuine sociopolitical issues. Why don't you try those medications in Europe? And why are you trying them in Africa? Why are you trying them in Asia? Those are all sociopolitical issues, right? And then we have political agenda of international government. What is the agenda of uh, WHO? which is actually situated in the U.S. What is the agenda? Why are, he, why are they bringing this, this medication? Why are they encouraging uh, family planning in developing countries? Is it because they are increasing in numbers and it's, it's going to be a threat to the advanced countries? What is the agenda? These are all sociopolitical issues in health promotion. Right? So if you don't, you're not able to go deep into these issues, you cannot promote your health, no matter what your agenda is, you can't. Um, often people don't trust the CIA and the American government. So anything that comes from the UN, which is based there, and WHO, people don't trust. What has CIA got to do with that? Do they influence medication? What are the issues? So those are real sociopolitical issues. If you want to uh, uh, go and give a, a polio vaccination, in Pakistan, and they will tell you, oh, no, 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 we're not taking it. It's the CIA. They want to come and poison us. So those are all socio-political issues that actually impact on health promotion. What about the eugenics movement? When I say eugenic movement, is a movement that, in a way, believes in extermination of some populations, and uh, some countries are bought into that. Oh. Why are they bringing in family planning, birth control? Is it their business? Or do they want to wipe us away? And references are often made to the wiping away of the aborigines in Australia, the wiping away of the, uh, the Native Americans uh, in the US and the rest. So why are they bringing in this one? In fact, when the HIV pandemic came, there was so much controversy that maybe the eugenics movement and the CIA are trying to maybe wipe away people in Africa. So the polio, one of the theories was that the polio vaccination was infected with the virus. And the polio vaccination started in 1973. And the places that were started are African countries, Sub-Saharan Africa, and then the Caribbean, this is a country in Caribbean. Uh, near Jamaica, uh, near, near Cuba, I've, I've forgotten the country. The country that was in recent uh, devastating earthquake. I'm not quite sure. It just escaped me. So those are the two places where uh, the polio vaccination were tested. And apparently, they were the two countries, that area in the, in the Caribbean and part of Africa where the polio vaccination was started in '73 were the areas that were having the highest HIV prevalence in 1983. And the assumption is that the HIV incubation is actually 10 years. So if they trace when the polio vaccination came in and when the HIV became prevalent and isolated, then their mind goes in their own. Oh, it's a eugenics movement. They want to control our population. So if, if people are having this mindset, how do you promote health? How do you promote health? It will be difficult to promote health. So there are sociopolitical issues that underlie health promotion across the globe. So with all these points given to you, you have to expand each and explain your point. And if you look at the sample assignment I gave you, some of these are captured in the context of Pakistan. Right, so let's look at the attitude in UK. UK here. British attitudes towards pharmaceutical industries. Even in the UK, people still don't trust the big pharma companies. See, the new research by YouGov shows that 
whilst it is widely seen as playing an important role in society, the UK public think Big Pharma is running a reputational deficit as it isn't trusted and is seen as potentially focusing on increasing profit at the cost of maintaining ethical standards. So they think, oh, they are making profit. It's not ethical. The way they approach, sometimes they fund the research institutions. They give them money. So once they give them money, they expect you to have kind of conflict of interest. So even if the medication is not effic uh, effic uh, efficacy, if it's not quite effective, you might be influenced because if you say it's not efficacious and it's withdrawn, you're not going to get any money for funding for your research. They'll cut off. So there's that compromise that, oh, uh, people don't actually trust them. They are all for their profit and not those. Right? Um, we have situations in the Brazil and part of uh, South Africa where they were supposed to allow them to produce generic drugs, which are cheaper versions of the original HIV drugs. But the big pharma companies refused. In fact, it was a battle for a long period, years, when people were dying. Until finally, Brazil and India went ahead and made the generic drug themselves, support their population who are suffering from HIV. So people don't actually trust them. So no doubt, UK, people are concerned about pharmaceutical industries, which are shared with other industries, including public belief that it is too focused on profit, doesn't pay enough operation tax, and pay executive too much. So even though they, want, they, they don't want to make a generic, generic drugs cheap and available for people, the executive go home with huge bonuses and allowances. Right. So people become suspicious, even in the UK. But more positively, its products are valued and is seen as improving people's lives and is socially useful. But these are things the public also re relates equally to the high-tech pharma industry, right? So yes, they are doing quite a good job. We understand them. But in a way, you could see that they are more profit-focused. But then that doesn't mean that they are not actually helping. They are actually helping uh, in supporting people's health through the NHS, right? So that is that for uh, 4.1. Let's look at 4.2. 4.2 is saying that analyze the impact of international campaigns and national policies on the demand for health services. You are trying to analyze what international, the, the impact of international and, and uh, international campaigns and national policies on the demand for health care. One of the big national and international campaigns is HIV awareness campaign and prevention. This has gone on for many years because HIV was seen as a threat. Right. Um, if we look at the sources of this, well, you can say that to some extent, such massive international campaigns has actually helped in reducing infection of HIV to a greater extent. So it's up to you for you up to you to debate and tell us what you think because you are required to analyze the campaign. I think in the, in the uh, mid 80s and in the early 90s, HIV awareness campaign was massive across the world. And that has in a way come a long way to uh, reduce the infection rate because people are more aware of the consequences of infection. And then we can look at national programs for family planning. There was so much international campaign on family planning, with the leaders being the Planned Parenthood Association, PPAG, in the US. They went all around, going to all countries, campaigning for people to reduce their family size. So in developing countries where people might have 10 children, a family or more. Now they are uh, apparently you, you scarcely see people with 10, 10 children, a man and a wife having 10 children. You scarcely see it. It has changed. It means the promotion has actually worked to some extent. Now the average 
family size in cities in Africa is three and four. Whereas uh, in the early 70s and the rest, the number will range around eight and 10 population. Right. What about maternal, national maternal and child health promotion? This has also gone on for ages to, uh, to improve the health of the mother and the child. And uh, UNICEF actually took this, this uh, concept on board and there was an international campaign to what extent have they re uh, succeeded. In fact, to a larger extent, maternal and child mortality has reduced drastically across the group. What about uh, campaigns on environmental pollution and climate change? In fact, climate change became a topical issue across all the world. And there are, uh, from the, uh, right from the Rio uh, uh, meeting, we have the Beijing conference, and from there we have the Paris one. So pollution and climate change has now become a big campaign issue across the world. You ask yourself, to what extent have they been able to promote health? Right, so it's, it's up to you to argue your case out and write your report. What about campaigns of plastic waste and the environment? This can also be linked with the next one, pollution of the sea with plastic waste. Now there's now a campaign to clean the world's oceans because they are full of what? Plastics. That would take hundreds of years because it's, it's not biodegradable. These are all international campaigns. Right. What about pollution of the sea with plastic waste, which I described, I described already? Let's come home to campaigns on smoking cessation. This is not UK issue only. It's a global campaign against the big tobacco companies because there's a clear evidence of an association between smoking and cancer, lung cancer in particular and then environmental consequences. So this is also a massive campaign that you can look at. What about promotion of physical activity and obesity pandemic? Now with the current new lifestyle from, from your home, from the air conditioning home in the US South, the Florida area from air conditioning home, you jump into an air conditioning car, you go to an air conditioning office in Florida. No walking, nothing. So you don't do anything. When you finish, you jump from your air conditioning room to air conditioning car to air conditioning home. And if you go home, what do you do? The television is there, or games are there, or the internet is there. So what happens? People become sedentary. No activity at all. So why wouldn't the obesity pandemic increase? Now, this is across the world. Because even in developing countries, where people were walking to farms and the rest, now they've all become urbanized. So the lifestyle that we have here is the same lifestyle you can see in India across the globe. These are all national and international sociopolitical issues impacting on what? Health promotion. Right. Let's look at the last bit of this. National and international sociopolitical issues in promoting of health. Evaluate the role of health promotion on health service demand. That is 4.3. You have to evaluate the role of health promotion on health service demand. Now, if you look at uh, demand for breast cancer screening, for instance, before the awareness of the need to go for tests, People were not actually going in for this. Now there is high demand for it. Where women of certain age are mandatory uh, to go and do the test. So there is high demand on screening services because of what? Health promotion for breast cancer. What about demand for STDs, sexually transmitted infections, STI? If it's STDs, sexually transmitted diseases. Now we prefer to call it STI, sexually transmitted infection services. There are so many uh, services across England 
where demand for such sexual health services have increased. Why? Because of health promotion. People are aware of the chances of being infected with any STS, uh, STI, uh, the chance to uh, get yourself out of things like uh, gonorrhea, syphilis, chancroid, chlamydia, HIV, most of them. So now demand for uh, such services has also increased, all because there is now adequate campaign. Right, so this has caused demand on such services. What about family planning services? Now we have a lot of uh, pharmacies and other sexual health centers that people, even teenagers can go and have the morning after pills. They are all there. And they've been educated either through their schools, telling them if you feel that you are not sure or you didn't protect yourself, the next day take this pill, do this and that. So, therefore, demand for such family planning services has also increased. So you can look at all this that I've raised here and then evaluate how successful are these services. That is all that you are required to do in terms of health promotion. So the first part of it, we were able to look at health promotion, what it is, uh, issues in health promotion, the individual role, the community role, uh, the state role, international bodies, what they can, they can play. And then we have looked at all the learning outcomes, 4.1, assessing national and international social political issues. We've analyzed the international campaigns, and then we've been able to evaluate the role of health promotion in determining health service demand in a national context, right? So uh, I believe we are more familiar in the UK, so you can write issues based upon UK. However, if you feel that you are from any, you have knowledge about any country outside the UK, you want to use them, fine, use them. It's been summarized. So if you look at the content of what I've just given you, and you compare it with the draft assignment I gave you, it should be so easy for you to finish learning at Comfort without any problem at all. Um, I would like to quickly rush through uh, LO5, if you wouldn't mind, because LO5 is not much. Is it okay? Fine with me. As a fine with you. Yes, yes. yes, it's fine. Okay, okay, that's fine. So with LO5, we need to understand contemporary issues in health and social care. Contemporary issues in health and social care. So first, we identify the contemporary issues in health and social care. We evaluate the impact of the issues on national and international policy. When we we'll evaluate the practical responses to contemporary issues in the national and international context. So we'll try to achieve this one within 15 minutes and then we are done with international health care policy. Then we can get on with our assignment and see what we can do. So let's look at the first slide. Contemporary issues. One is the HIV, right? International contemporary issues, things that took the, uh, uh, the globe by storm, right? So the human immunodeficiency virus, the HIV is a virus that damages the cells in your immune system and weakens your ability to fight everyday infections and disease. So it's just your antibodies that are weakened. So naturally, you cannot fight any disease, even cold or whatever it is. Once you catch it, your body cannot resist. And HIV is the only pandemic with a dedicated WHO agency to tackle it. Forget about the spelling of the tackle, to tackle it, right? So with HIV, WHO has dedicated one section called UNAIDS, UNAIDS. So it's the only pandemic that has got a dedicated agency at WHO. So they've set up a whole agency, UNAIDS, just for HIV. It means that it is a global pandemic. 
And it's one of the contemporary issues that have been able to beat scientists. Even as they try to uh, tackle the virus in this way, the virus changes and eludes scientists in terms of getting a cure. And there is currently no cure for HIV. But there are very effective drug treatments that enable most people with the virus to live a long and healthy life. And that, those ones are called ARVs, anti retroviral drugs. So we are asked to identify contemporary issues in health and social care, 5.1, and HIV is number one. Let's look at the second one, Ebola virus. This is very recent. It's another contemporary issue in health and social care. Ebola virus, formerly known, uh, known as Ebola, Hemorrhagic fever is a severe and often fatal illness in humans. It's transmitted to people from wild animals and spread in the human population through human to human transmission. So we know what happened recently in um, Sierra Leone, Guinea, uh, Liberia, where many people lost their lives. Now, originally we had this Ebola virus in Congo, in Central Africa. And last, I think uh, last uh, four years or so was the first time it actually occurred in West Africa. It was the first time. And it was so fearful, the outbreak was so alarming that the whole world caught attention. So it became an international issue. And they have to bring in effort all over the world with one nurse, a nurse from uh, Scotland who got there, got infected, not knowing came to Heathrow, walked through to Scotland, and it was, a, it was a whole panic across the whole of the UK. That is an international contemporary issue that actually impacted the whole globe. So all that we need to do is to identify contemporary issues in health and social care. So that is one of the contemporary issues that we can talk about. So the 2014-2016 outbreak in West Africa involved major urban areas as well as rural areas, and many people lost their lives. Let's look at the area where the Ebola virus that I'm talking about. The yellow on the map is Guinea, and the next is Sierra Leone, and we have Liberia at the bottom. Right. So we have Guinea, Sierra Leone, and Liberia. And many people in this region of West Africa actually lost their lives uh, because of the Ebola virus. And, and the UN actually came in to support because they couldn't handle it alone. So it became a global issue. Right. Let's look at the Zika virus. It's another contemporary uh, a disease, contemporary outbreak. Now the Zika virus is mainly spread by mosquitoes. For most people, it's a very mild infection and isn't harmful, but it may be more serious for pregnant women. As there is evidence it causes birth defects, in particular abnormally, abnormally small head, which is in, in clinical terms is uh, microcephaly. So Zika doesn't naturally occur in the UK, fine. So the UK, we are out of Zika. But as far as the South American continent is concerned, Zika was very, very serious. And there were many people who were infected in Brazil and all across Latin America and people were fearful that it was going to spread into the mainland US. So it caught global attention and people were given traveling adv advice. If you are traveling from the UK on holiday or any other thing, you were given advice for the dangers of what? The Zika virus. Okay, let's go to the next slide. If you look at the Zika virus, it spread on mosquitoes. And you look at the endemic areas in red in our map. These are all the endemic areas. So. Uh, Mexico and then uh, US is also part of the threat because they have they, they, they have uh, a land a border right so the whole of South America Mexico and the US were areas that were at risk from the Zika virus and then it actually affects what pregnant mothers because once you are bitten by the mosquitoes your child the, the fetus in the room is going to be affected, and the sure sign is what? The small head 
babies that are being born as a result of what Zika. Well, so this is a global and international issue that came over the news. Even though now it's gone, I think it's more or less seasonal, right? If you go to parts of uh, Asia, they don't have the Zika, but they have what is called the dengue fever. Dengue fever. Unfortunately, you know, dengue is not in Africa. Africa is malaria fever, which have got a lot of treatment. But dengue fever is quite dangerous. But the Zika is more deadly. Right. Now, let's look at uh, contemporary issues in the UK. We're talking about all those big pandemics. What about the issue of obesity in the UK? National contemporary issue in health and social care. Nationally, UK, we have issue with what? Obesity. And we have clear statistics here. In 2016 17, there were 617,000 admissions in the US in the NHS hospitals where obesity was a factor. This is an increase of 18% on 2015 2016. It means that if nothing is done, then we're going to live with that lifestyle and it's going to be a major problem for the UK as a whole. So we've moved on from the international one to national issue. So hospital admissions with primary care or secondary care diagnosis of obesity went on high. Right, so that's obesity. It's a national issue that you can look at. Right. Let's look at 5.2. It says that evaluate the impact of issues on national and international policy. Evaluate. This is an evaluation. We try to evaluate the impact of issues on national and international policy. So what is the uh, impact of the Zika, uh, the issue of obesity, HIV, and the rest, uh, Ebola virus? How do they impact on the policy in the UK? If you want to look at the policy outside the UK fund. So uh, the guiding policy document and framework for WHO Europe work on HIV include, because of HIV, Europe took a policy. The European Action Plan for HIV AIDS 2012-2015, which put into action the UN AIDS strategy for 2011-2015 and the WHO Global Health Sector strategy on HIV AIDS for 2011-2015. So they came out with what? A strategy. And this, uh, we have the Dublin Declaration on Partnership to Fight HIV AIDS in Europe and Central Asia. It's another policy. And the United Nations Millennium Development Goals, MDGs. So we have the European having their policy. We have a declaration in Dublin. And then the UN also had a declaration, Millennium Development Goals, MDGs. In fact, we couldn't achieve them. So instead of Millennium, which is the, eight, the year 2000, we've now moved the MDGs into what? 2025 because we couldn't uh, uh, achieve the target to combat HIV AIDS. It's still a problem. So those international issues have forced nations and the world as a whole to shape their policies towards them, right? The vision for, uh, for the European region is zero new HIV infection. This is a policy in Europe zero aid related deaths and zero discrimination in the world in which people living with hiv are able to live long and healthy life this is a policy in europe that is their vision so it's anticipated that there will be zero new hiv infection so the health promotion and prevention will be intensified so that there will be zero what new hiv infection there will be zero AIDS-related deaths and zero discrimination in the world when people living with HIV are able to live long and healthy. So they brought the, the combination treatment, the ARVs, to make sure that they'll be able to achieve this uh, vision. So um, we're trying to look at the impact. And then the goals for the European region by 2015 are the goals that is set. Uh, to immediately halt 
and reverse the spread of HIV in Europe. To achieve universal access to comprehensive HIV pre pre prevention, treatment, care, and support, and to, con to contribute to the attainment of the Millennium Development Goal. They want to achieve them. So these are visions, and these are goals, right? What about with death of the HIV and what they planned? Look at Childhood Obesity Plan. The government launched its Childhood Obesity Plan, this long-awaited plan, which in its formative stage had been called a strategy, had been eagerly awaited by health campaigners following a consultation process. The talk was that it would be a comprehensive and far-reaching strategy to tackle the UK's obesity pandemic. Right, so we are trying to evaluate. They have brought in, they have put in new things to make sure we succeed and bring the pandemic of, of obesity down. Childhood obesity plan. And then out of that, there's a policy on sugar and soft drinks. Now in schools, they are trying to target the soft drink industry. So the soft drinks industry, they've come out with a levy, commonly referred to as sugar tax. In the UK, we have sugar tax. So if uh, uh, 2012, you were buying uh, Coke, there was no sugar tax on it. Now there are sugar tax on all soft drinks, right? And this is one of the positive plans that has come into force to be able to tackle obesity. What about junk food? Getting a handle on childhood obesity will not happen unless we prevent the junk food industry from advertising to our children. These are all issues that need to be discussed. What about vaccine development? As a response to the seriousness of the Ebola virus, we've quickly organized ourselves and um, a lot of vaccines were produced by the WHO. They were all shipped straight away to uh, Liberia, uh, Sierra Leone, and Guinea. So that is a, a, it's, it's a response to the pandemic. So because of the pandemic, we've been able to quickly organize ourselves and develop vaccines which are able to do that. So the Ebola virus, which had several vaccines in the pipeline when it reached pandemic status, funding mechanism in place through the National Institute for Health and other global agencies, along with private sector life science companies. They've all come together to make sure uh, we, have, we are prepared for the next pandemic. What about provider pre preparedness? This pa pandemic has made sure that all providers, including the WHO, are now prepared and alert. Every country has got a stockpile of what? The vaccine. So that in case of any uh, outbreak, they can provide it easy. So providers, local public health officials, the community-based organizations, they form part of an overall pandemic strategy. Example, previous Ebola screening effort. These are all showing that we are prepared. And then our practical response to such contemporary issues has been superb. Because 5.3 is saying that even practical responses, you could, you could see that we are prepared for the next Ebola outbreak. Next slide. What about Synergy across government agencies It's part of the response. Now, different agencies are now coordinating more than before. So it also shows that we have actually responded. It's a practical response. The Ebola outbreak involved coordination with the Defense Department. In fact, soldiers were roped in and its research arm. We have DAPRA as the Defense Agency Research Project Agency. They all came in. Previously, they were out of the equation. And this all shows that we are now having interagency working group. The NHS, uh, the Defense uh, uh, Department, the WHO, people are now coming together. What about the response to HIV? Practical response to HIV has been superb. There are supplies of condoms to combat AIDS. There are educational campaigns 
to create awareness. They have now come out with combination treatment, ARVs, that is able to uh, let people living with HIV live normal life. These are all practical responses. Have there been any response for the obesity crisis in the UK? Yes. Sugar and soft drinks have been targeted with a tax. We've also looked at the issue of junk food. You can't just advertise any food without telling us the calories involved in the food. Apart from that, we are also now, we've responded well with the issue of obesity because they have been increased in physical activity. You, we've got gyms spread out across the whole country. It's not UK alone. If you go to Africa or the cities, there are gyms all over, but across the whole world. So people are seeing that obesity is a problem, and the practical response is to target the sugar and soft drink industry, target junk food, increase this activity all over the world. So 5.3, we are evaluating, evaluating the practical response to contemporary issues. Right. So if you look at that, we've been able to uh, cover LO4 and, uh, and LO5. And I'm giving you detailed slides. This is not on Moodle. I've updated what is on Moodle. So I'm going to put this one on Moodle straight away. Now, if you line this side by side with the assignment brief, and then you take the sample assignment, I don't think you shouldn't be able to finish healthcare policy within one week and then bring the, um, the draft for me to look at. So having a look at all that, if you have any questions that you want to ask, please ask me about LO4 and LO5, which has been covered in detail. And as I said, this is not on model. It's an updated version of what is on model. So I'm going to put this one on model to support you. So apart from this, we also have the template assignment that was sent to you. Look at uh, your assignment brief, put the three together, and you have all the ingredients to help you do your assignment without any problem at all. These are a few references you can look at. A few references that I think will be uh, useful to you. I spoke about the Dublin Declaration to Fight HIV, the Millennium Development Goals. Uh, we've got a video and podcast, European Action Plan for HIV AIDS 2015, uh, Action Plan for Health Sector Response to HIV, Global Health Sector, they are all the uh, Royal College of Pediatrics and Child Health. It's another reference. Uh, a good one is uh, Kavita Patel, 2016, on the Zika virus, policy implications and practical consideration. These are all slides, uh, references that you can go into and then support so that you wouldn't have much struggle searching for information here and there. I'm giving you all the references and detailed PowerPoint slide to help you uh, do your assignment. If you have any question after this point, please uh, let me know. I've taken part of your time, but uh, I, I appreciate your, 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 your patience. And I believe I've delivered what will be able to help you. Uh, if you have any question, please ask me. No questions. I'm fine. Thank you. Yeah. All, right. Yeah. 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 all right. They'll definitely be on Moodle tomorrow. I'm going to put it on Moodle within half an hour. As soon as I get oh. home, I'll put it on Moodle. That's fine. Yeah. So if you have any issue about doing the assignment, just drop me my email and uh, I want to make sure that everybody will have a very solid and uh, nice assignment for the international healthcare policy. Right. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Cheers. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye. Bye.